All right, yes, I will admit I have been falling behind a lot in terms of making videos. And not that I hold myself to a schedule. I've kind of given up on that, but I just feel like it's been a while and I've gotten a lot of things that I've wanted to talk about since then. It's just been finding the time, putting in the effort, that kind of thing to actually do it. So I'm starting with something a little bit smaller, a little bit easier to talk about. And also, to give myself a little bit of a break, uh, the next batch of videos, I'm going to try to approach it with uh, no editing, aside from the beginning and ending. So there are going to be more awkward pauses. There are probably going to be moments of me sneezing or whatever that I just don't cut out. Uh, my apologies if you hate that stuff, but I hate editing. So I'm going to try doing this in as, I guess, streamlined a way as possible while also making less work for myself in the future. So it'll probably be rough, but oh well. I think some of that is because I've been doing uh, streams for ShowZ on Discord lately, and that's kind of gotten me a little bit more used to the idea of just going with it. But anyway, as you can clearly see, today we are talking about G1 Hot Rod, specifically the Walmart exclusive <sighs> retro version that is uh, more of like a cartoon accurate color scheme. And I never owned a G1, uh, I never owned a G1 Hot Rod before. Big surprise, I'm sure. But I, this is actually really cool. I'm really impressed with this. The colors are great, but like the actual engineering on this thing is really neat too. It's kind of really impressive for a G1 figure. Uh, but as you can see, it's a Hot Rod. It's his sleek little wedge-shaped car with the pipes going along the side, and the big spoiler, and yeah, um, got the nice flames up there. I mean, all this stuff, aside from this section up here, we're going to be seeing in robot mode anyway. Speaking of, you can clearly see him under there. But it's a good-looking car. I don't know. Um, I like the colors. The color matching isn't perfect. The maroon-colored plastic versus the paint is a little bit off, and also the... Uh, well, this is plastic? Yeah, I think this is plastic. Yeah, you can see, like, the hood is darker than the arms, but then the arms are darker than this section right in here. Like, it's multiple tones of this kind of pinkish maroon color, which is fine, and you can kind of see that, too, in what will become the waist section, but I don't know. It, I don't know if this is, like, a G1 thing or a modern Hasbro not being able to paint match for anything thing, but... It's a little bit like, okay, doesn't quite match up, but it's fine. It's fine. It also may be discoloring. I don't know. I didn't really notice it before when I first got this figure, but I also wasn't really looking for it. So who knows? But as I said, this is a neat looking car. Uh, it's got the rubberized feeling, at least, tires. It rolls really well because G1 toy and these things are designed to actually like be vehicles. And I think I'm going to have more to say about the transformation in the robot mode. But as I said, this is a pretty decent looking hot rod vehicle. And it's a G1 toy, so it's actually a pretty decent size. And since I'm not editing, I'm just going to be bringing everyone in one at a time. There we go. And... Samus, and back this up so you all can see what I'm looking at here. There we go. Tripod got stuck in some cables. Okay, so here you can see how G1 Hot Rod stacks up against a standard size comparison assortment. Um, This is, you know, it's not G1 toy colors, but it is, as far as I understand, a one-to-one -one physical recreation of the G1 toy. So, like, this is how big the G1 toy originally was. Now, let's get these back out of the way. And I only have one modern deluxe in vehicle mode on hand, ready to go right this second. So, uh, here he is with... Legacy Skullgrin. And I think, you know, 
Like Skullgrin's a bit of a weird shape and a weird one, but I feel like overall it's roughly the same size. Just with like Skullgrin kind of going up rather than out. So yeah, it's I want to say about modern deluxe size. And of course, can't forget the mainstay. Accidentally hit the stop button. Uh, one other thing I want to go over before moving on to the transformation is that he does come with his guns, which we'll see more in robot mode. Uh, I like that they're not the same, like they're not identical. Unfortunately, as far as I know, you can only store one at a time, and it just pegs into the top of the engine there. So you can just peg that in and give him a little hood gun, which looks silly. But it's G1, so we give it a pass, right? It would be nice if there was a peg hole on top of one of the other guns. You could at least stack them, but whatever. It's G1. No, the transformation is actually really interesting, like I said. Uh, first, going to slide the legs down, so I'm gonna push, and those will unclick and come down and pull until they click. And that gets them in place. And I also like how, as you pull the leg down, it actually goes this way a little bit. So the legs separate ever so slightly when you pull them into place. I'm going to flip out the toes. And now going to flip out the arms a little bit. And kind of accordion out the hood and head, which can be a little tricky. But, uh, oh, actually, I forgot. I need to flip this around. So rotate that down. That gives a little bit more clearance for the head to come up through there. So this swings around. The head swings around and through. And this actually clips in here. So you push that in and it'll clip into place. Then this comes down. And as it comes down, this tab here will kind of... It's hard to see because of the lighting, but there's like this little spot right here that that tab will wedge into. So you bring this down and push that tab into place, and that holds the torso together. Now we can rotate the back up, finish flaring out the arms, and then rotate the biceps, which are actually necessary for the transformation. So it's G1 toy with bicep swivels. And that is it. That is G1 hot rod all transformed. And that's a really interesting and clever transformation. It's uh, got its share of issues <laughs> in terms of how things come together. But, you know, it's a G1 toy. Uh, though I will say... This kind of stuff, it always bugs me that people will give this a pass for G1 toys, but then complain and complain and complain about modern toys having similar issues with, like, gaps and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, I get it, there were limitations with G1, but at the same time, why can't y'all be as understanding with the, uh, <laughs> the more modern stuff? You know, it happens sometimes. Anyway, uh, it's, it's a cool figure. His head sits a little far forward, but again, G1. And from the front, at least, it looks really good for what it is. Like, I don't know, this is a really solid G1 toy. And it's nice and uh, well-proportioned. It's really not a lot of kibble for what it is. And I don't know, it's cool. I think this is probably the best, at least as far as I'm concerned, I think the best and most successful uh, toy that came from the Transformers movie, the animated movie. Because some of those other ones were a bit rough. And this isn't perfect, but you know, it's I think it's probably the better overall figure in terms of like the engineering and stuff. That's and also we have to talk about the deco, because that is the big thing with this figure. And again, here it looks great. They did a lot of nice painted detail in some places, and I really like this is something that a lot of people pointed out, but I really like how they painted these sections of the legs orange to make it look like the thigh section kind of continues down and then painted the section gray to mimic the uh, boots rather than in the uh, original toy i believe this whole section was its own color 
and then the thighs were different colors. So it just kind of re it redefines the proportions a little bit visually just by where the color placement is, which I think works really nicely. And weirdly, they did a pretty darn good job of matching that orange to that orange. Why can't they do that with other colors? I don't know, but yeah. Um, only real gripe for the leg deco is the same gripe a lot of people have, which is the uh, die-cast toes are silver or chromish or whatever, and they kind of stand out from the gray for the rest of the boots. But ultimately, I think it's fine. You know, it's not distracting. It's just, it would have been nice if these matched, but it's die cast that stuff's kind of a pain to paint and they also have as i pointed out the two-tone maroon in the waist section and up in the torso and i kind of feel like looking at it now this is probably why this section is the darker maroon color to kind of match with this darker color in here it works really well in robot mode <laughs> and for the arms they uh, actually painted the fists it looks like it kind of looks like that plastic might be orange or red and they painted the fists this gray color, which works for me. And also, of course, the yellow and orange painted on the uh, cuff detail. They also painted a little bit of gray on the insides of the shoulders. And once again, the really nice flame detail on the front, collar, and the face, which again does the kind of two-tone maroon with uh, a little bit of the dark color up along, up along the crest with the uh, gray in there and i'm trying to see if they also did the darker it's just because of the lighting it's hard to tell but yeah i believe they did a little bit of that darker maroon along the uh, ridge above the eyes and incidentally that face for g1 is pretty darn good too i like the lighter gray and the bright blue eyes it looks very hot rod and this is just really nice. The spoiler comes over his back nicely, and you know it's it's what I guess I would expect from the G1 figure. You know, <laughs> it's the first representation of the character, and I think they did a really good job. And there are his accessories, which you can plug into either hand. And I don't know which gun goes in which hand. I don't care, but those plug in, and now he's got his guns, and he can actually kind of use them because he has elbows it's like i think pretty much the one non-trans or one of two non-transformation joints that this figure has is elbows so he can hold out his guns like that and shoot can't move at the shoulders in or out but you get what kind of counts as like a butterfly motion so that's something uh, the rest of the articulation it's it's all the arms the head does not move at all uh, the legs do not move at all, other than sliding up and down, and the toes doing this. But the arms have that butterfly motion. You have a bicep swivel because of the transformation, a 90-degree bend at the elbow, and weirdly, they worked in wrist rotation. I don't know why, but he can rotate his wrists. So you can do, like, very, very basic posing with this guy. <laughs> but you can do it. I don't know. I appreciate it. It's a G1 toy, like I said, so I don't really care about the lack of posability. I think he just looks cool standing there with his guns. And now let's try and preemptively get this at the right level for some size comparisons, because uh, he's... Well, you'll see. Oh, bring it in. Artfire, who are noticing signs of yellowing on some plastic, that's great. And Rotor Storm, and Burnout, and Samus, and I'll bring it back down, okay. And yeah, uh, it's interesting that G1 Hot Rod is pretty much as tall as Rotor Storm, and maybe a little taller actually than Rotor Storm, and uh, Rotor Storm is a tall deluxe. So he is taller than the uh, the average modern deluxe at this point. It's out of the way again. Now I am deviating from the uh, other size comparisons just a bit because I feel like this is also necessary. Here he is with Studio Series 86 Hot Rod. And uh, 86 Hot Rod has three pro labels on, which I highly recommend. It's a really nice set. 
but yes, uh, he is taller, noticeably taller, like maybe half a head taller than the Voyager uh, Studio Series Hot Rod. But really, it's Deluxe, but yeah, he's he's taller than a modern Deluxe Hot Rod, but you know, if you look at it in terms of engineering, obviously there's more to this guy than this guy. Still would be cool if they released this guy in animation colors, but oh well. And, of course, gotta do this one too. And that is all I've got for the G1 retro reissue of Hot Rod. And as I said, this is really cool. I, I just think it's neat. I never really wanted a Hot Rod figure when I was younger. And even when I got back into collecting, it was kind of like, eh, whatever. But the colors on this one really appealed to me. And actually looking at some videos to look at like the engineering and stuff, I actually really like what this thing does. So I'm glad I managed to get a hold of it. I got kind of lucky. It came, I believe it came back in stock on uh, Hasbro Pulse and I managed to snag one before they sold out again. But yeah, I'd say if you're curious, definitely go for it. It's a great color scheme and it's a really neat, solid figure on its own. The only thing that sucks is, you know, it's a G1 figure, so it's got certain limitations, but you kind of come to expect that, you know? Yep, that is it. Thank you, everybody, for watching. <clears throat> and here I said I wasn't going to edit. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to stick to my guns. See, this is what I meant when I said I'm not going to edit, and you're going to see those awkward pauses. But yes, uh, thank you all for watching. I've said enough, so what do you all think of G1 Retro Colors uh, Hot Rod, whatever this thing's officially called. Whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. Once again, <laughs> again, thank you for watching. And uh, I don't know, I, I, I keep going back and forth on how I feel about the new outro. I feel like I don't, I don't really have much else to say or add and everything else feels kind of gimmicky. So I'm just going to say toys are awesome and be cool to each other, okay?